The Bali Bunyan Podcast. Brought to you by Jer Walsh Media, in association with Bali Bunyan News. Hello and welcome along to the very first in the series of Ballybunion podcasts. To begin, we're going to take a little trip back in time to the central ballroom in Ballybunion and one band in particular, the Morris Mulcahy Orchestra, who were associated with that venue for over three decades. In the 1940s and 50s, dancing in Ballybunion was limited to two dance halls or ballrooms as they would later become known, and these were of course the Pavilion on Main Street and the much smaller Ballerina, a little further up on the opposite side. Pat Crowley's big band from Cork were resident for many years at the Pavilion, while the Ballerina hosted much smaller bands, usually from the locality, with the likes of Bunny Dalton's band from the Stole, or the Michael Jones band from Ballybunion, among the most popular. However, local businessman Matt O'Sullivan, who owned the Central Hotel, was to revolutionise the whole dancing and entertainment scene in Ballybunion, when he built the central ballroom on the site of the old dairy yard on Lower Main Street. The new ballroom first opened its doors on Sunday, June 29, 1956, and according to the Kerryman newspaper of the following Friday, a crowd of over 10,000 people swelled the town for the occasion. Those who can still remember that night say that the crowd was double that, and Colette Walsh, or Colette Moore as she was back then, recalls working in the family shop and ice cream parlour. I have never in my life seen such a crowd of people in Ballybunion, not even for the Irish Open or the visit of Bill Clinton. I have vivid memories of the shop running out of minerals, ice cream, chocolate, cigarettes and practically everything else on that night, she says. If you happen to be in attendance on opening night, you might recall the doormen on duty were Moss Galvin, James Walsh, Eddie Houlihan, Jack Savage, John Rowan and Paddy O'Connor, while other staff members included Miss Foley who ran the cloakroom, Danny and Joe McNamara, Michael Jones, Jack Lynch, Noel Short, Stevie Walsh and of course the manager Victor Rattray who always wore a tuxedo. The band who performed on that historic occasion were the Pete Roxburgh Big Band from Scotland with guest vocalist Joseph Locke. Roxburgh's band had a very first residency at the Central for that summer of 56, before internal fighting among band members led to a split in late August, which created an opening for the Morris Mulcahy Orchestra, who played their first dance at the Central on Saturday night, September the 8th. The orchestra was formed in Mitchellstown in 1951 by brothers Morris, Dave, Michael and 14-year-old Joe Mulcahy, and having played for a number of dress dances, hunt balls and various other functions in their own locality, they turned professional one year later. Following a handful of successful dances at the Central in late 1956, the Mulcahys began a three-month residency from June to August the following summer, which was to last every summer for the next 13 years. They played six nights a week in Ballybunion, which afforded the band members and their families the opportunity to holiday in the town for the summer months and of course there was the added bonus of not having to pack up equipment and drive home to Mitchellstown after every dance. The show usually began nightly at 9pm with the relief band and ended at 1am when couples would then gather their belongings from the cloakroom and either head next door to Moore's shop for an ice cream or to the Castle Green for a romantic stroll. In the beginning the numbers in Mulcahy's orchestra varied from 8 to a high of 16 at one stage, but among the mainstay members in those early days were the four Mulcahy brothers along with double bass player Jack Noonan from Ballybunion who had joined them from Jimmy Wiley's band early in 57 and Jack is still alive to this day and living in Mitchellstown. Other band members in those early years included trumpet player Marco Petrazzi, sax player Danny Keane, drummer Frankie Burke, vocalist Brendan Hickey and guitar player Johnny Wall from Tralee. The Mulcahys were renowned all over for their brass section and wonderful arrangements of popular favourites like Moonlight Serenade, Pennsylvania 65,000, In the Mood, 
and of course the band's signature tune, American Patrol. Throughout the various social changes in Ireland at the time, including the advent of rock and roll, as well as the birth of the show band scene, the Mulcahy Orchestra always stayed close to its big band roots, yet still managed to attract record crowds to Ballybunion and the Central Ballroom. The band's business affairs were managed by Morris himself, who was also the musical director, while the equipment and the tour bus were the responsibility of his brother Dave. But tragedy was to strike on Thursday the 22nd of August 1963 when Morris died suddenly in a Tralee hospital after a brief illness. This created shockwaves among dancers not only in Ballybunion but around the country and as a mark of respect the centre remained closed on the night of his burial the following Saturday. The Morris Mulcahy Orchestra were back on stage again however the following Wednesday night at the Central with the youngest of the brothers Joe as the new band leader and musical director. There were two changes in personnel the following year as guitarist Johnny Wall departed to join the newly formed Kerry Blues and he was replaced by Tommy Atkins, while vocalist Brendan Hickey also left and he was replaced by Tommy Fee, who went on to marry local woman Joan Pierce from Doom Road and both of them are still living in Tommy's native county of Fermanagh. The Morris Mulcahy Orchestra played on every summer through the swinging 60s still managing to pack the central in spite of various other lineup changes and of course the fierce competition from the emerging show bands fronted by the likes of Brendan Boyer, Joe Dolan and Dickie Rock. The huge success of the central ballroom and the emergence of two new ballrooms, Horns on Sand Hill Road and the Hibernian at East End signified the end of the ballerina and the pavilion ballrooms which subsequently closed down and were bought by the Duggan family who converted them both to amusement arcades which exist on the main street to this day. Towards the end of the decade another major change was taking place in Ballybunion as Matt O'Sullivan had decided to move the ballroom from its location on the main street to the rear of the central hotel on what's now known as Lartigue Road. Designed by architect Robert Creedon from Dublin, the new central ballroom was built using local tradesmen and it took just four and a half months to complete, costing £65,000 in total to build and equip at the time, which would equate to just under €1 million Euro in today's money. Opening night was Thursday the 23rd of May 1968, which was Ascension Thursday, and in those days, apart from being a church holiday, it was widely if unofficially observed as a public holiday as well. The new ballroom was blessed early in the day by local parish priest Father Bob Murphy and it was officially opened just before 9pm by John B. Keane. The official attendance on opening night was just over 3,500 people and the band of course were the Morris Mulcahy Orchestra with local group The Big Beats as the relief band. Among the door staff on the night were the likes of Jet Costello, Jerry Enright, Paddy Nagel, Teddy Halpin, John Carroll and Tim Lynch. While in a well-staged publicity stunt, the first two patrons through the door were Mary Noonan and Joe Stack, both from Church Road, who had been the first two patrons through the door of the original Central Ballroom on opening night some 12 years earlier. Matt O'Sullivan and his son Kenneth gave away a £100 cash prize for a raffle on the door tickets that night and it was won by local publican Owen Liston. Health and safety in those days was simply common sense and there was never any major incidents that necessitated calling the Gardaí, even with up to 4,000 dancers in attendance on a Whit or August weekend night, while even on a quiet night, usually a Tuesday, there would always be eight or 900 people in the hall. In the beginning, there was just a mineral bar selling lemonade or club orange, 
while Nash's Mineral Waters from Newcastle West would send a truckload of these soft drinks, or minerals as they were known, three times a week to the ballroom. Another feature was the infamous mobile stage, which was mounted on wheels so that it could be pulled forward to make the ballroom smaller on quieter nights, but it didn't always work that way, as sometimes the motors didn't correspond with one another and the stage would often move sideways instead of backwards or forwards and then get jammed. If this happened, the band were instructed to keep on playing, while a couple of strong men were recruited from among the patrons to sort it out. A great idea in theory, but overall it was a failure. After two successful summers of 68 and 69, Matt O'Sullivan and his son Kenneth failed to agree financial terms with the Morris Mulcahy for the following season of 1970, and the long partnership between the O'Sullivans and the Mulcahys that began in 1956 suddenly ended. This led to a huge decline for the Central and although various other well-known bands were tried over the course of the summer season, none of them had the pulling power or attraction of the Morris Mulcahy Orchestra. So in an attempt to turn things around, the O'Sullivans decided that a bar license and cabaret lounge were necessary for the following year in accordance with the ever-changing entertainment scene in Ireland. However, legalities prevented the use of the bar license from the Central Hotel on the main street simply because it was a separate building. But a clever solicitor found a loophole in the law and so a tunnel was built under the Lartigue Road, linking the hotel and the ballroom, making them one premises so to speak, and allowing intoxicating drink to be sold in the ballroom. The upstairs balcony was also closed off and a new cabaret lounge, the Barn Bar, was added. So the centre now hosted a cabaret act upstairs as well as a show band downstairs in the main hall, both for the one entrance price, but none of this worked, and eventually after two seasons, at the end of September 1971, both the ballroom and the hotel were sold to John Byrne and his associates, Billy and Ted Clifford and Dennis Foley, who owned the Mount Brandon Hotel in Tralee. The O'Sullivans had in the meantime opened their newly built 100 bedroom Ambassador Hotel, located on the main street where the original ballroom had stood and the sale of the central hotel and ballroom enabled them to concentrate all their efforts on the ambassador going forward. Having completed the purchase of the central hotel and ballroom, John Byrne immediately went into negotiations to bring back the Morris Mulcahy Orchestra as the resident band, and he succeeded in doing so for five nights a week for the 1972 summer season, and so the relationship between the central ballroom and the Mulcahys was restored and would last for almost another decade. The Miami show band massacre that saw three members of the hugely popular show band lose their lives in a terrorist attack on Thursday the 31st of July 1975, the night before they were due to play the Central for the Friday of the August bank holiday weekend. And this single act of terrorism would have a far reaching effect on the whole dancing scene in Ireland, both north and south of the border, as it marked the beginning of the end of the show band era, which of course, took its toll on the central ballroom. Times were changing fast on the Irish entertainment scene and the Morris Mulcahy Orchestra tried to change with the times in a bid for survival, even changing their name at one stage to the Morris Mulcahy Superband on the suggestion of their new manager Frank Daly, who to this day spends his summers in Ballybunion. By the mid to late 70s, several members of the Morris Mulcahy band, including Ballybunion native Jack Noonan, had departed to form the top 10 big band and among their replacements were the likes of Mick Kremen, Oliver O'Donnell, brothers Tom and Cecil Baylor, the K twins Jerry and Paul along with Joe Mulcahy's son Ken and Michael Mulcahy's son Dave who introduced a more modern pop style program to the band. But cabaret lounges were appearing all over the country as more and more pubs began to host live music and as the ballrooms fell into a serious decline there was little or no demand for big bands such as the Mulcahys, who were now forced to go back to their roots on the wedding and dress dance circuit. By the late 70s, Dave Mulcahy had passed away, while Joe and Michael played on for another decade, before putting away their saxophones for the last time on New Year's Eve 1990, when the legendary name of the Morris Mulcahy Orchestra was retired. Michael passed away in August of 2003, while Joe, the last of the four brothers, died on January 22nd, 2021. 
As for the central ballroom, it limped into its four decade, the 80s, but it could never attract the crowds of the 50s, 60s and 70s, and so it finally closed its doors in 1984, and a few short years later, became the Ballybunion Community Centre. So, that's it for episode one. I hope you enjoyed our little trip down memory lane to the Central Ballroom and the Morris McCarthy Band, and I hope you'll join me again real soon here on the Ballybunion Podcast. Thank you for listening to this podcast and if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe on YouTube or even leave a review. The Ballybunion Podcast would be delighted to hear from you if you have a suggestion for a future podcast, so please get in touch by email to ballybunionpodcast at gmail.com. This podcast was researched and produced by Jer Walsh Media for entertainment purposes and may not be copied or posted on social media without the permission of the owner.